My name is Brad Sherrill. I'm a professor at Michigan State University, and my expertise is in producing new isotopes for research. An isotope is uh, just a name for a different version of a nucleus. So in nature, uh, nuclei of atoms have in them neutrons and protons. The number of protons determine what element it is. For example, calcium is calcium because there's 20 protons in the nucleus. And the number of neutrons determine what the isotope is. Isotopes are important for two reasons. One is really just basic science of trying to understand about the atomic nucleus. A lot of physics goes along the line of if we want to understand something, we have to understand the pieces that make it up, and then we have to understand how those pieces interact with each other. So in the nucleus, the two main components are neutrons and protons, and we would like to understand in the nucleus how these pieces, the neutrons and protons, interact with each other. But a really good way to do that is if you can change the number of neutrons and protons in some way and study how that, what difference that makes. The capabilities we've developed over the past 10 years or so are based on uh, particle accelerators. In our, I mean, the colloquial term for them are atom smashers. And in our case with the MSU cyclotron, that's a, actually a very good example as we actually smash nuclei to produce the new nuclei that we're interested in. Now our current cyclotron has limited capability. And although right at the moment, the MSU cyclotron funded by the National Science Foundation is actually the most powerful um, atom smasher in the world. It's the most powerful device for producing these new uh, isotopes. But around the world, um, other countries are investing in new facilities in this area. And uh, we're going to also have to make an investment or we're going to have to make an advance into the future. Now, the, um, we have ideas for what that next advance should be. And it's quite exciting because if we use new linear accelerator technology, we can actually make something that's up to a million times more powerful than what we have now. And so a lot of the kind of research that becomes just barely possible with our current facility now becomes uh, almost easy with the new facility. And then likewise, the new things that we have to discover and access to the new isotopes becomes that much greater when we gain this, this huge uh, increase in capability. The other way that isotopes are important is in technology and applications to society. So fairly often, particular isotopes have a particular characteristic that's useful for research. A very standard example is in uh, uh, medical is in medicine where we have certain isotopes that uh, emit an anti-electron. It's called a positron. And uh, the, where that uh, decay takes place can be localized by something called positron emission tomography or PET. So if you have an isotope in the body which is emitting uh, positrons and you can localize it, you can use that as a way to do, for example, search where there's a lot of act current active growth uh, which might indicate the presence of a tumor. One of the uh, good things about uh, doing this kind of research on a university campus is that students at all stages can be involved in it. And uh, we have a lot of undergraduate students who come and uh, are involved in uh, building things, helping analyze data, and, um, and getting experience in working in a, a national research laboratory. The, the reason I wrote the, this perspectives piece for science was that I felt that it wasn't appreciated uh, in the broader scientific community of this, I think, is really amazing capability that, that has been developed. As we talk about nanotechnology and building things on the atomic scale, but we're really now also in the realm of build, building things on the nuclear scale. Um, we're, we've gotten to the point where um, people can begin to specify the number of neutrons and protons that they would like to have in a nucleus for whatever reason uh, that they want that for. And, and we we're, we're, have developed now the ability to deliver uh, on that. And it's really, a, it's really a technology, it's really a capability on the nuclear scale, uh, which is uh, 100,000 times smaller than the, the atomic scale. And I think it's really exciting. But it's also exciting because we're just at the beginning of this. Uh, and as we move into the next generation of 
facilities that produce even, that are even more powerful in producing new isotopes, we'll see another dramatic expansion in our, in our understanding of a variety of things um, that range from understanding the nature of stars and how the elements, how, the star, how stars create the elements in the universe to providing new isotopes with new characteristics, uh, decay characteristics, new half-lives uh, for applications to other things to being able to answer very fundamental questions about the nature of the physics of the atomic nucleus. NSCL is a world-leading laboratory for rare isotope research and nuclear science education. Operation of NSCL as a national user facility is supported by the Experimental Nuclear Physics Program of the National Science Foundation.